Hi, this is Amanda from His Net Ministries or Trial and Spade Ministries. I have something I want to share with you today that I've never shared in public before, but the Lord has put it on my heart that now is the time to do that. First, let's pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity to share truth, to share experiences with you, to grow together in our walk and for those that don't know you Lord God maybe to have some truth and some light shined on their life Lord God in Jesus name Amen due to some pine pollen issues I will be taking a sip of water from time to time otherwise my voice kind of sounds like a dying frog <laughs> I titled this video, My Hallowed Journey. It could have been titled My Halloween Journey, but what I want to talk to you about is so much more than Halloween. I was asked a question last week, one that really made me stop and think and evaluate some things. I was asked, why don't you celebrate Halloween? And I think that over the years, the church as a whole has gotten so staunch and so strong in what they believe, which is good, but it's become to the world more that we're so strong in sharing what we don't do and not sharing what we do and what God tells us to do and why he tells us to do it. So that's what I'm about today. That's what I want to share with you. I have a personal story I want to share. I grew up in a Christian family, and I'm so thankful for that. I'm thankful for the Word of God that they taught me. I'm thankful for all the Sunday schools and all the Sunday mornings and children's church and Wednesday nights and Sunday nights and revival weeks and church camp. And the fact that my parents felt it important enough to disciple us that we even had God's time every morning before school where in our rooms we had private time. We also had evening devotions sitting around the big table as a family. I'm thankful for that. They did not have anyone explain to them about the spirit world, about spiritual warfare, or about much about the enemy except for maybe a few scriptures. I grew up celebrating Halloween to the point where one year we had a haunted house inside our house. At about the same age that we did that, I think that was around 9 or 10, I went to spend the night with one of my friends. And when we were at her house, we were playing like kids do. We went in her room like girls do. And she got out our toys and we played for a while. And then she got out something that was I'd never seen before and I really didn't know anything about it. Um, she got out this wooden board and it had a little um, teardrop shaped thing with a glass bobble in the middle. And it had letters, the board had letters and numbers on it and yes, no and all that. And some of you are guessing, yes, it was a Ouija board. We played with it for a while and noticed suddenly that that little wooden thing with the glass center was moving on its own. Our fingers were barely touching it, but it was moving on its own. Well, I didn't know anything about it, so I didn't think much about it. I just thought, hmm, that's kind of weird. She looked at me, I liked her, I said, hmm, that's kind of weird, isn't it? And we went on about the time together. I didn't say anything to my parents because I didn't know anything, so I didn't know that was a maybe something I shouldn't have played with, so I didn't make a big deal out of it. Well, it was after that that at night, when I was alone in my bedroom, often, just as I'm about to fall asleep, I would sense this coldness, this you know, like when somebody's looking at you and you know they're looking at you? I sensed that and I saw these most evil looking creature, which I didn't even know then it was called a demon. 
Um, but as I got older, I learned from the Word and I learned from other people. And all I knew to do was what one of the disciples said in the Bible was, Get thee behind me, Satan. So that's what I did. And it would stop and it would go away. But it would come back. And I had these visits from these dark spirits for many years. All the way up into high school, when I stayed overnight at Lee and Ely's house there in Woodburn, Indiana, I spent the night at Lee Ann's house and we were having all kinds of fun and it was getting late about 11:30, 12 o'clock and let's see this was um, 10th or 11th grade, I think 10th grade, and we decided it was probably time for us to go to bed. Excuse me. So we went in her room and we got in bed and I remember for some reason we were both decided to sleep on sleeping bags laying on the floor and we were laying on our, our sleeping bags and we we're facing her doorway and start to drift off and I felt that feeling again. There it was, scary, eerie, creepy, kind of made your skin crawl and I looked and there was a dark spirit. This dark spirit was almost six feet tall. This dark spirit looked like, I don't want to go into big details because that's not the point, but this dark spirit looked like a wild boar. And again, I looked at Leanne, she looked at me, and she said, there's something in here, isn't it? Isn't there? So she sensed something, although she couldn't see it. I learned later I have the gift of a seer, so that's why I'm able to see things um, when some people don't. But she knew something was up, and I said, yeah. I said, get out. Get behind me in Jesus' name. And it left. I went to Bible college after graduation. I met a wonderful man named Dan. He's part of trial and spade and his net ministries early on in our marriage when our daughter was just a toddler I think she was maybe two somewhere around there um, we were pastoring a church in Fountain City Indiana now this house we lived in the parsonage and it was unlike any other house we'd lived in this house had a history we weren't aware of the previous minister because it was church of christ they called them ministers the previous minister or pastor had several children he had some teenagers and i think a middle schooler and he had an, an adult child we were told by the congregation members that the adult child had heard a voice tell him to throw his 18 month old daughter up against the wall and he did and she died and he went to prison well, that's all we knew if that was enough that was okay something's not right okay well as we lived there for a few months I kept seeing these little white flashes of light just going through the house not constantly but just occasionally and I knew that there wasn't anything floating in the air nothing was blowing doors were closed windows were closed what was that we also noticed a really, really bad smell. It smelled like rotten eggs. We also had a friend in the church. Her name was Jewel. Jewel befriended us and she was so good to us as young pastors and as a young married couple with a toddler. She knew about the things of the spirit. She knew about the spirit world and spirit, spiritual warfare. Now, she didn't come at us and lecture us. She didn't preach at us. She just showed us love, and she gently talked to us about some things. And she introduced us to TBN. Now, I'm not a big TBN fan today for various reasons. We're not going to discuss that here in this video. But I did watch a few programs, and I got mad. Because I was taught against certain things. I was taught against things of the spirit. I was taught against spiritual power and, and these things. That, that that was weird and you don't want to have anything to do with that. You need to stay away from that. 
we were guarding the truth that we had. And I'm thankful for that truth. But in this journey, this hallowed journey that I'm sharing with you, I need to tell you that the anger led me to pick up my Bible and try for three months. I searched every scripture that I could find in the index and in the concordance about Holy Spirit. I tried to prove them wrong. What they were teaching on those television shows, that was not right. And I was determined to prove them wrong. Well, God had another idea. And I couldn't. So I began to study more and watch a few more programs. One program that I watched, I called my husband in and said, Hey, can you watch this with me? And they were talking about cleansing a house. Well, I've never heard of that. And they were talking about seeing things in, in a house. That caught my attention. I was on the edge of my seat because I wanted to find out what was going on. At that time, my husband and I were bickering a lot. We were arguing with each other, picking at each other. It was, seemed like it was almost constant. It was just home was not a peaceful place. Um, it wasn't fighting. It was just words, verbal, which is enough. <laughs> so we sat down, we watched the program, and they taught us how to go through the, the house using the Word of God and that Christians have authority over all the power of the enemy. That's what Jesus said. He said, Behold, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. And using the blood of Jesus, because the Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So we took some oil, which you've never done before, and we anointed the doorways, the windows, and we started praying through each room using those scriptures. We started in the living room, we went to the dining room, and connected to the dining room was the kitchen, of course. We went and did the kitchen. Now, in the kitchen, there was a door to the basement. This was an old house, and it had an old cellar. We stayed together, we went downstairs, and we prayed there, and we came back upstairs, closed the door, and then we went toward our daughter's bedroom. We prayed in there, and then there was a very short hallway from her bedroom to our bedroom. And as we went out of her room into our bedroom, her bedroom door went like this. And we turned around, and we could see she was laying there on the bed. How the door open? Again, windows were closed, doors were closed. But that door opened. Okay, we knew something wasn't quite right there. Still a bit ignorant, but you know, God blesses your intent when it honors Him. So we prayed through our bedroom, and as we're praying in our bedroom, anointing the doors, the windows, binding the enemy from working in our home, declaring that our home will be a place of peace. There was a doorway between the bedrooms. There was a doorway to the upstairs. And that door opened. And we heard steps. I knew then, okay, this is getting real. We stayed together. I was determined. After seeing my daughter's door, bedroom door open, I said, oh no, this mama bear's not letting this go. And my husband was the same. So we stayed together. We went up those stairs. And we were praying. We were commanding. We were quoting scripture. And we got to the upstairs where there were two bedrooms and one had a closet in it. We prayed through the first bedroom. And we went into the second bedroom. This bedroom was the bedroom that I used for my creative space. And Dan felt led, my husband, felt led to open up the closet door. Excuse me, we got a mosquito wants to join us. He opened up the closet door, and in the closet there was the, the upward part of the chimney, and there was a space between the chimney and the wall. 
and he was led to look there. He he just we, he felt the Holy Spirit guiding him to look there. And he looked. Remember my first part of the story? He looked and there was something there between the wall and the fireplace. Now let's pause here for just a minute because I didn't tell you the other part of this house's story. The children, the older children, had a bad reputation. They were known for having wild parties up in the room that I used to create in. Oh, goody. Also, in the big old garage, my husband found a coffin. What? Yep, he found a coffin. He chopped it up and got rid of it. But also, we learned from Jewel that the older son used to drive around in a big old station wagon and have a small coffin in the back of the station wagon. That was the one who eventually, excuse me, murdered his child. And went and he looked in between the wall and the fireplace and there was a Ouija board. Yes, I said a Ouija board. This story began with one and is ending with one because we took that thing and we took it downstairs and we prayed and we took it out to the outside of the house to the backyard to the burn barrel we put it in the burn barrel we lit the burn barrel and as we lit it and it began to burn there was a scream let out not by me not by my husband not by our daughter she was still asleep after that someone presented us with a book called this present darkness now it's a fiction book it's a fiction novel but the Lord used it to show us more and more about the spirit world see people the spirit world is very real I learned this from the age of nine I I was never taught it I experienced it and then I would go to the word and find oh that's what this is and I would learn oh this is how you deal with after that that I really felt convicted I really felt like I had to make a personal choice. I had the knowledge of the reality of the spirit world, and I knew that even though I grew up celebrating that thing that day, that there was more to it than most people understood. You see, the enemy doesn't care if you understand or not. He doesn't care what knowledge you have. If you're lacking the knowledge, he doesn't care. He's going to do, he's going to follow the laws of the spirit world. And if you give him access, which is what I did as a young girl playing with a Ouija board, I gave him access into me and into my life. He's going to take it. He's going to try to find access. In that night that we prayed through the house, my husband and I closed the door. Guess what? His access was gone. We became a peaceful family. The bickering stopped. The smell was gone. And I didn't see those things flitting around in the house anymore. If you're a believer, we're supposed to be image bearers, and there's nothing about the decorations for Halloween that reflect Jesus. And as image bearers and, and Christians, we're supposed to reflect our Savior. We're supposed to point people in the way. We're supposed to preserve life. That's why the Bible says we are salt of the earth. We're supposed to be light. So my reason for not celebrating Halloween is because I know the reality of the dark side, and I don't want anything to do with it. Scripture tells us that God hates it. So with the Holy Spirit being my best friend, I don't want to grieve Him. I don't want to honor anything that could possibly point others to the darkness that I discovered. I would rather share how wonderful and powerful He is and how he protects and he guides and he teaches. That's really what we need to focus on. Focus on Jesus. Focus on his spirit. Focus on the word of God. 
Hi, this is Amanda from His Net Ministries, Trial and Spade Ministries. I wanted to add on to the video just a little bit because I don't think I was as clear as I wanted to be about this whole issue. For many years, I was anti-Halloween. I was don't do anything. Um, that hasn't changed, but my attitude, my heart attitude towards it has. I no longer point the finger and condemn other people who do. I just myself, I'm not comfortable because, and you can do the research yourself, I'm not going to make a list of things, but this particular last week of October is a high holy time for the Church of Satan. That is documented. Even Anton LaVey, the high priest of Satan in America, he made that declaration. There are wedding ceremonies that take place during this time, and I'm not talking about the typical American wedding ceremonies. There are all kinds of atrocities that take place, all in the name of darkness. Many, many people I know do not have in their heart to celebrate that. I understand that. But for me, and what I've experienced, not only from the dark side, but what I've experienced as a living, breathing, daily relationship with my King, I just, I just ignore the day because there's nothing in it to elevate Him. There's nothing in it to glorify Him. There's nothing in it. You can even say, well, we can use as a, as a conversation opener. Maybe you can. That's kind of what I'm trying to do right now, isn't it? It's just that I have a different perspective because of what the Lord has allowed me to experience. And I hope you understand that there's more going on on both sides. On the side of light and the side of darkness than you may have known. And I challenge you, don't get into fascination with darkness. That is dangerous. It won't go well for you. But I would challenge you to pursue light, to pursue Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Eastern religions claim to have light, but their light does not hold a candle to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and light of the world. Today, October 31st, is also a very special day in the body of Christ. It's when Martin Luther, through his study and prayer and discernment, learned that some of the teachings of the Catholic Church were not scriptural, and he went and he nailed it today. He nailed it back in the 1500s. He nailed a list of grievances. We call that Reformation Day. That, I can celebrate. This has been my Halloween journey. Thanks for watching.